Hey there guys, welcome back to Mana Down Under. For this Commander deck tech, we are looking at the new commander, Yarok or Yarok, depending on how to pronounce it, Desecrated. Now this is a spicy commander, everyone's very excited seeing this. So we're in black, blue, green at 5 mana for a 3-5 elemental horror with death touch and lifelink. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. It is literally Panharmonicon on a stick. And even better. So quick breakdown. Death Touch Lifelink, that's just nice to have, that's just a combat stat. But the actual main flavor of the deck, if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a trigger ability of a permanent we control. So if opponent has a permanent enters the battlefield that triggers something we control, we still get to do it again. So and it's permanence. Panharmonicon just cares about artifact and creatures, so this is a step up. So let's go into it. So of course we'll run Panharmonicon as a redundancy plan, but if you have this and your commander out, well, I hope you like doing math, it's gonna get a bit messy. Modrotha is a current competing commander, but Modrotha is that good, it can be in the 99. It still supports the deck in every way. Just playing things to my graveyard, we can't really go wrong there. So the main thing people are going with this deck is Landfall, and Landfall is very good in this deck. Every time a land enters, we get to do the effect pretty much twice. So Minxless can put so much damage on our opponent. Every time a land comes in, they'll lose three life and you get three counters. Let's try for six and six counters on them. Mmm, it's good. Royal Elemental, every time a land comes in, we can start stealing their creatures as long as we keep the Elemental in play. While every land that enters, steal two creatures. Never let them have an army. Bail off the Woodcrash should become the one shot, one kill, hopefully. With every land entering with our commander, that's going to be plus 8, plus 8, and trample. Fetch land, plus 16, plus 16. You can see where we're going with this. Other great landfall mechanics are the retreats, so green and black. We can go with any option, depends on where you're in the game. Lotus Cobra offers a lot of ramp early on, especially with our fetch lands in the deck. Hedron Crab, one of my personal favorites. Every time we have a landfall trigger, they have to mill 3. With our commander, that's mill 6. But we can also add things like Alter the Brood. Every time we have a permanent enter the battlefield, they have to mill 1. But with our commander, that's going to be two. So you can put a lot of mill on them just through passive across the length of the game. Evoke is a pretty good mechanic with this commander too. My favorite fish in Magic, even though it's not a fish, Muldrifter. Draws your two cards, try drawing four. It's a lot better. Aether Snipe can bounce non-land permanents back to the known's hand. We can start dismantling their board. Where Mourn Welk here, they have to discard two. Well, let's try discarding four. And Shriek more offers us a bit of removal in a creature form. And we have the option of paying the hard cost, or we can evoke them if we need them quicker and out there. Now, we need an army. This is going to be the main way we win this game. So, all our token producers enter the battlefield or through landfall can establish a huge board presence. Imagine doubling this. Hornet Queen normally gives you four tokens. With our commander, eight death touch flies is pretty good. Avenger is Endicar, very abusive in this deck. We get plant tokens to the number of lands we control. Double that up, every time a landfall trigger occurs, they'll get plus two, plus two really on them. Rampaging Bailoff, every landfall of our commander, that's two full four tokens, that's a lot of pressure. Grave Time entering the battlefield creates four two two tokens through our commander. This is how we're gonna win the game. But of course, we gotta sneak that boy in there, Cradle of Behemoth. There's just a blowout. With the commander, his effect gets doubled. So it's actually two times X. <laughs> it's unbelievable, so much power. But removal is key, and we're in good colours, we've got strong removal, we've got a lot of creature and non-creature removal. The Noxious Gear Hulk and Overseer the Damned can hit creatures our opponent control. The Overseer can bring us a bit of an army through this as well, whereas Woodfall Primus and Mold Strambler can both hit non-creature permanents. And with Woodfall Primus's ability to persist, hopefully he'll destroy four permanents across the length of the game. But we've got other options too, like Acidic Slime, where we can hit things like artifact enchantments and lands. Playcrafter, entering battlefield, each player has to sacrifice two creatures, planeswalkers, discard, like everything's times by two with this commander. Massacre Worm enters the battlefield, neg for the board. Oh, it's so good. Now, Venser isn't removal, but he's here because he can bounce things back on entry. So we can unsummon two things, really. More of our actual spell removal. Assassin's Trophy, Maelstrom Pulse, and Putrefy give us a good option that we can hit pretty much any permanent we need to. Damnation's our board wipe, of course. Another thing I've tried to shoehorn into deck is theft. I love stealing things from my opponents. Treachery makes it very easy. We just control enchanted creature, simple as that. You untap five lands when it comes to play. Actually, try untapping 10 with the commander. Live the dream, turn it into a ramp spell. Mm. Hostage Taker and Gonti, similar effects here where we can actually steal cards from our opponent's field and we can cast them. 
but we can double up the options. Oh. Cast their stuff, not ours, that's the dream. Now, tutors are helpful, and again, we're in good colors for it, but the nature of the deck, we are very creature heavy, so our tutors will lean that way. Runescar Demon is a creature with a tutor built in, which on entry we can double up with our commander, so it's a no-brainer. Finale of Devastation is here for a few reasons. We can either get out any cheap creature early on from the deck or the graveyard, that's a big part. You can retrieve key pieces. Or we get out Cradle of Behemoth, and if we can afford that little bit extra, X is 10, that's just a free win right there. If you can true out Cradle of Behemoth with Finale of Devastation on X10 or higher, your opponent would just be blowing out the water. They're gone. Well, Lutuda Tutor lets us get creatures, put them off top of our library. Key things, of course. Eternal Witness isn't a tutor, but it helps us get key pieces back from a graveyard, which we will rely on. But with the Commander, you can return two key pieces at least. Now, support is just kind of um, all the cards which are pretty spicy in the deck. They don't really have a dedicated home, but they work well and have little combos going on. Now, Polluted Bonds, one of my favorite cards. I love the artwork still to this day. <laughs> so, every time they play land, they're gonna lose two life and we gain two life. But because it's permanent, we control that is being triggered by another permanent entering the board, our commander activates it again. Similar idea to Sire's Stagnation, every time our opponent has a land come into play, they have to exile top two cards of the library and we draw two. These give us so much life and so much draw. Tat Yorva offers us just more life gain and more draw passive as we play more lands, but double it up. So every time we have a land come in, gain two, draw two. It it really is the dream. Some more fun, interesting cards. Palacron just creates infant mana by itself with the commander. You don't need anything else. So you pay seven mana, it comes into play, you untap seven lands. But with the commander provided you have eight lands or more, you untap 14 because you're doubling the effect. But you can only pay, you pay four mana to put Palacron back into your hand and you just keep repeating. So if you want to put X spells in your deck or just cast everything in your hand for the turn or feed into something, you can quite easily, infinite mana. Illusions of Grandeur, <laughs> Ender's Battlefield, you gain 20 life. Have 40 instead, and then just don't pay the upkeep, and just sacrifice it, it's fine, you lose the 20 life. So for 4 mana, you can have 20 life, that's how it is pretty much. Wild Pair is a very fun card in this deck, because we care about Into the Battlefield effects so much, and our creatures are very important for this deck. So if we can double up creatures for nothing, why not? So for example, if you play Avenger of Zendikar, it's a 5-5, you get a tiny army with it, but Cradle of Behemoth is also a 5-5, so you can search that out of your deck and put a strain to play, and then use its set effect and hopefully win the game. Or another example is Acidic Slime, where on entry it can destroy an artifact, enchantment, or land, well, probably two with the commander, but with Wild Pair, you can also fetch out a Muldrifter and draw two cards or four with the commander. The value is very real here. More of just a good option in the deck, the Scarab God. You've got key creatures in your graveyard which you can reanimate that have Enter the Battlefield effects. Your opponent probably will, or your opponents. So it's just a easy auto include. We've got a bit of random blue here too. Brainstorm Effect of Fiction is just a way to get a bit more cards on our hand. And Cyclonic Rift could probably put in the removal slot, but it's just here as an emergency button. Your little weenies that can draw cards early on too. Elvish Visionary, Fibble Thip, and Bathal Strix are just great creatures early on. Hopefully with that commander they're drawing us at least two cards and not for some value somewhere else. Now for artifacts, I've kind of built it around Tribute Mage here, because when Tribute Mage enters the battlefield, you can search your deck for an artifact with CMC 2 and put it into your hand. Well, our signets are all 2 mana, so we've gotten the 3 signets for our colours, and our forms of protection for our commander, Lightning Greaves and Soft Boots are both 2 mana, so this one creature can hopefully fetch 2 of them for us. But other artifacts from the deck are Conjurer's Closet, which can abuse our enter battlefield effect on many of our creatures, and then do it again with our commander of course, and Soul Ring because commander, why not? And this leads us into ramp. So a lot of elves or similar light creatures can search for lands on entry. Your commander says search for two. This is where we get very abusive. We can speed up quite far ahead of other players. So wood elves and Yavimai druid can get forest cards, not basics. You can get your dual lands and whatnot. Whereas Farhaven elf, Nissa, and Solemn can get basic. But another option is spring bloom druid. Try saying that a lot of times. Very greedy card in this deck. Ends battlefield. You may sack a land if you do. Search a library for two basics onto battlefield tapped. With the commander, sack two lands, get four lands. Mmm, so much value. Oh, speaking of which, the lands now. We've got a couple of oddball lands here. Lana World and Kalani Garden can be abused with the commander. You can have two grafting counters on Lana War, or you can create two plant tokens with the garden. Bajuka Bog lets you remove two opponent's graveyards in one go. Rec Tower is just a must have because we can draw quite a few cards if we're not careful. Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse are here for our landfall triggers. They help thin down our deck, of course. And Command Tower and Opulent Palace offer us our three colors. As for our multicolor lands, we've got our three buddy lands, our three shock lands, and the three fetch lands that accommodate them. But in addition, we run three temples, because on entry, the temples can scry one. 
So you can scry one, then scry one again. It's not scry two, you have to go one and then one, but it gives us a bit more options on our deck. As for basics, we run four swamps, five forests, and four islands. And this gives us a bit of basics we can dig out when we need to. I think Yorok is an amazing commander. It's it's a strong com competitor for Moldrotha, and it just depends how people want to build the decks. Both of them are very interchangeable, I think. You could have Moldrotha as a commander or Yorok and just switch them out, and the decks will probably do pretty well. Um, the good thing though with Yorick, you can just put any of your favorite enter the battlefield effects. It doesn't have to be creatures, it can be anything. You just put them in your deck and you'll probably do all right. It's very abusive. Um, yeah, I think this is great commander. Props to Wizards, this is very strong and it'll be a top tier commander for years to come. So let me know your thoughts about the commander. How have you built it? What are your ideas or suggestions? All right, have a good one guys. See ya. Alrighty, it's that time of the video. We can do a bit of a shameless plug. So thank you for watching guys. If you enjoyed it, please sub and like. It really does help the channel's analytics out a lot. Maybe consider joining me on my other social platforms where you can talk about anything and everything magic related. And special thank you to our patrons. They make the channel what it is. These guys are the building blocks of Mana Down Under. They support the channel in many ways. And if you'd be interested in supporting the channel, links are down below and at the end of the video. Thank you guys.